It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. It is the DJ Roundtable. Do you know where your DJ's at tonight? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable and our fun group. Uh, we're down a couple right now, but hopefully we'll have some more coming in in a little bit. Matt's actually here early. <laughs> Usually Matt's the one running late. <laughs> Taxes. Yeah. Because <laughs> Matt's always got stuff going on. As always, I got a DJ Cool thing here, all the way from beautiful South Carolina there. And mm -hmm. um, he's got a cool gig coming up uh, this weekend. He's got a gig at a uh, hot dog restaurant right by him. Um, and uh, he's all excited about that. Hopefully, uh, we'll get a gig log either Saturday night or Sunday sometime. Saturday uh, night. When yeah, church gets be, out and stuff. Yeah, it'll be Saturday night at the gig. So I'm going to try to edit at the gig while there one song is playing. I'll start at the gig while multitasking. There you go. And then, uh, of course, Matt is always releasing videos. He tries to release a video at least once a week, if not uh, uh, once every other week. So it all boils down to how many gigs he has. Of course, the man is always gigging, always doing stuff. Um, and, uh, Brettley had something going on, but he will be here shortly. Um, I don't know what exactly is going on. He just said he'll be a little bit late and we might have some other guests too. We have to see, uh, who stops in and stuff. Um, first thing first, if you're watching this on YouTube, I want to ask you a question. If you're watching, watching this and liking the content, do me a favor, smash the like button and follow the channel. Plus, also, you know, we want to hear your critiques, criticisms, comments, questions, and so forth, so on. Go ahead and put it down in the channel because we want to answer those things. And I actually gave our panel, as well as a few people not here, I gave them the information too, uh, questions and uh, comments from a couple DJs. Uh, actually, uh, one DJ in particular, we, I got some comments. Um, one praising Matt uh, for changing things up on his gig logs. I uh, wanted to I really appreciate that right there. Uh, calling out how we all try to make our gig logs fun and exciting. Everything from Hunter, either doing a party or a wedding or hot dog, uh, hot dog restaurant, hot dog. I like we call them Chicago hot dog stands. Uh, to uh, Matt doing huge uh, parties and weddings and doing uh, uh, school events. We all try to do unique stuff on those on those gig logs. And we try to look different items and we don't want to look the same thing over and over again. We appreciate that you see that. And Matt really does appreciate that. Um, he's also working at some stuff too. So if you see him not paying attention hundred percent, it's because he, <laughs> Matt's always I'm got listening. something going on. He's always working. I'm working too. I'm actually uh, answering some uh, customers right here for uh, <laughs> on my phone for text messages for uh wedding for this weekend. So it, it's, I mean, we're, uh, we're, there we go. Yeah, here's what, I, yeah, here's what I used to record my gig logs with my 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 uh, phone. There you go, and that's that's the whole entire thing. That's what we're here for. The fun part with everything, as always, the DJ Roundtable. Again, if you're here on Twitch Live, please uh, do not be afraid. Talk in the chat, and I see some chat users. I need to bring the chat over here, and so I can put next to my area and i see you jim i see you there how you doing sir and uh oh man boy is back and we have your question that's gonna be the first question of the night and that's the first question i'm gonna ask the panel it's a question you asked for last week uh uh man boy uh man boy mom fighting gaming <laughs> <laughs> and then what's up how you doing uh, the, the guys are fine here uh, uh you asked last week, why did you became or become a DJ? So, Hunter, um, we know the story, how you became a DJ, but why? So it's a little bit different. We know how you became because you're, pl you're playing tapes and playing music and CDs and stuff like that for parties, and yeah, you got more into it. Why did you become a DJ? What, what made you say, oh. I want to be a DJ? basically to help my church out with a lot of their parties and events and help my parents out with their events and just to share my love of music with the with other people and it's just something I'm a natural at after the I DJ that outreach block party I knew was a natural at making people dance and playing the music that people love I knew I wanted to do this full time 
Okay. So you you did it because of the fact that I have love of music? I love and... music. Music has been my entire life, even from the day I was born. I remember listening to cassette tapes in my mom's car. <laughs> well, it, don't do this the wrong way, Hunter. Also, as a DJ, you're, you're a single guy. I'm married. I, I have a wife. <laughs> uh, being a single guy, sometimes girls come at you and stuff like that and want your phone number. I'm sure you was, you're DJing. Probably didn't account for that. But you're no. not there to get girls' numbers. You're there to provide a service and have people enjoy themselves. I know someone asked, yeah, someone asked that about on my uh, live stream that if that I if I DJ just to get the ladies note, doing it to share my love of music with my friends and family and well, you never know. You may run into that perfect one girl. You never know. I'm just saying, you never know. You never know. You run you run into her and also you find her. I didn't expect when I ran into my wife. <laughs> so you, you never know. You find that one person that you care about. And, you know, that's, that's the one thing is, uh, you know, you enjoy yourself, you enjoy yourself doing it. And if something else happens, if you win the lottery because you were a DJ or because, you know, you uh, get whatever, you, you do it, not because of that, you do it because you love the music, you love enjoying, you love putting a smile on people's faces. Matt, question goes to you. Why did you become a DJ? Um, for the girls, uh, right? I, I've always, well, kind of. Um, I, I've always liked, I've always been a music fan. I've always been a music fan, and um, uh, my freshman year in college, uh, I was living off campus, and I wanted to have some parties, so I bought like a derby light and made a playlist. And then my, my sophomore year, when I was, oops, when I was rushing this fraternity, uh, a friend of mine after a party. We like went back to my place to get a couple of drinks and uh, I sh well, sure, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and I'm trying to calculate my age there. Whatever. No, no problem. Um, it, it was college. Uh, so we had a couple of drinks and then he's like, oh, check out this DJ program because I always had a big music library. And so he showed me virtual DJ and I played around with that and then decided that I needed a real DJ program. Um, and so I, not to hate on virtual DJ, but hey, you um, do. That's I, okay. bought, <laughs> I, bought the control, I bought the controller and software, and uh, then I did a practice for maybe three months, got my music up to par. I had my set list pretty much like planned out to where I write them on sticky notes or notes in my computer. And then I did a frat party and went great and got hired a bunch after that. And the rest is history. In 2016, I started doing weddings and became a more legitimate business with a website and because before it was just word of mouth, Facebook, texting, et cetera. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, I mean, I did it and now I do it as a career, but I, I it's not just the money. I, I do love sharing new music with people and opening their ears to stuff they may not have ever heard before. As I, I always so, you know, get this, here's something that I forgot to share. Back in the 2000s, when I was in middle school, I actually ran a sound booth for my choir and also for our beta club ceremonies, I would run the sound. And we had a tape player and a CD player with a little mixing board behind the booth. <laughs> so I kind of got experience with that. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's one of the things also with everything that you, you know, you do it's always fun to understand um, how someone became a DJ, but why it's, it's an important question. And again, I thank you, uh, man, boy, uh, game mafia gaming. Um, I appreciate it. And your name. Your name is unique. So I, I got to slow down make sure I kind of put space in there. Cause I want to say all one word. <laughs> so I apologize. I know how gaming names go. Uh, <laughs> But I appreciate the question. And uh, I will ask all the other DJs tonight that question. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, hopefully get uh, DJ Bruntley here in a little bit. I know he said, he was, again, he was going to be running late. And if someone else comes in, we're going to ask that question. And then for myself, what is the reason why I DJ? What what made me DJ? I I did it. Yeah, it was back the first time I DJed uh, was because my friends were doing it. And I saw all... I saw the girls they were getting. I'm like, they're getting girls because they're DJs. This is in senior year of high school. And I'm like, oh, I want to learn how to do this. And I started doing it. I started doing friends, start, you know, go by their house, 
play with their, you know, with their albums, play with their uh, record players, play with, uh, you know, uh, you know, you get the mixer, play with the stuff, started to buy a couple of things here and there. And I never really bought a ton of equipment. I bought a couple pieces and, you know, but I had to go use their stuff to actually do stuff and hung around with them, did stuff with them for a while. Then I stopped because when I got into, uh, got into college, um, and it was just so, um, crazy. And you hear my dog barking, I apologize. She hears something or <laughs> hears something or smells something. So if you hear her barking, she's on the other side of the house. But, um, if, uh, if, if you look at that stuff right there in college and stuff, it was very much, um, I guess I want to concentrate more on work and school than music and I missed it. And then when I started back up, um, I actually got reignited, uh, from doing a, uh, a, um, uh, a car meet, um, somebody I knew I was running a car meet and asked me, Hey, do you know how to do music? I said, yeah, I DJ many years ago. And that's why I got reintroduced to it. And I'm like, Oh, I, I miss this. I miss the fun. I miss the excitement. And, I'm a wedding DJ. I just do weddings. That's all I do. I don't try and go for other things because I want to work on one area, one area only. And just like Hunter, he only does friends with family. Uh, Matt will do almost anything. Um, but I, I like to do just weddings and I'm kind of selective on some of the, uh, some of the things as far as uh, I like being, I like to technically challenge weddings. I like the stuff that's more uh, harder to do. Uh, but sometimes like, uh, you know, like anything else, you run into weddings that customer and us don't match for whatever reason or whatever. And it's like, okay, fine. Great. It, it's disappointing me because I want to do their wedding. Yeah. I want to make the money that's, that's owned. That's the business owner side, but the other side, the DJ side of me, it's like, I want to see their, the couple's smile and face at the end of the night, happy that they enjoy themselves. And that's why I look for with weddings. And again, if I had the business now going 19 years um, is I've gone from just the music, music, music to, I want to see people happy and enjoy themselves. So I think I've matured in how I perceive and do a wedding. I like to do it that it's making people happy, making people enjoy themselves. And I do like music, you know, again, all of us have a music passion, but it, it's, 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 it's very interesting because the fact that I, I try to make people happy and it, to me it is a big thing. I guess it goes back to when I worked before in corporations, worked in retail and stuff and worked in management and just, you're trying to make customers happy and people happy. And it's a hard, hard role to work uh, sometimes. And you know, I'm glad I have this business. I'm glad I've been able to do this. I'm glad that uh, uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, talk to us and uh, hopefully uh, we get together and, uh, you know, uh, I'm exactly what they want. And I, I try. I try to do exactly what they want and make them happy. And I'm sure Hunter does the same thing for his clients as well as Matt. We're all small business owners and we're all trying to take care of our clients and customers. So, again, uh, Man Boy Mafia Gaming, thank you for the question. <laughs> I appreciate it. And again, and, uh, uh, will the other, if, if someone else comes in, we'll ask them that question and we'll start off with that. Uh, now, one of the things that we uh, I sent out to you guys was a video. Um, and I'm going to, do I have it still? I got to there's a video on uh from our local uh one of our local TV stations, WGN Channel 9. It's the show is called Backstory. And uh don't Larry Potash is one of the anchors at uh WG, WGN Channel 9. And they had a very interesting video about um vinyl. And how vinyl is coming back. It's making a big comeback uh, because people are really enjoying uh, the vinyl feel, the, the, the sound of it. Uh, they had one guy who had a 
record collection yeah. of over 10,000. Yep, he's got vinyl. Um, I have a few pieces of vinyl. Um, and of course, here's my record player, Fluence RT81. There great, you go. Great high quality listener turntable. And the, the thing that they were talking about talking to these people, and there's one uh, guy who uh, he does jazz, and they had a young lady who does uh, uh, New Wave. And um, I'm looking for the link here. Uh, does New Wave uh, on vinyl. She has old vinyl records and like, you know, in excess and stuff like that. The other guy had uh, stuff from uh, a lot of great uh, jazz throughout the years. Um, oh, uh, Brentley just sent a message. Our train is behind. So, wow. okay, I, I guess he took the train somewhere. So, that right there answers that. <laughs> um, let me put this in the chat here. Yeah, there you go. That link right there is to the video uh, on YouTube. And, uh, again, Backstories is a great show if you get a chance to uh, look for Backstory and WGN. A lot of great stories especially here in Chicago about stuff, um, a lot of history on things. It's basically a history-based show. And my question to the panel, and again, I know that Hunter has some vinyl, uh, and if you guys ever get a chance to, Brian S. Red, um, who is a friend of mine, um, also on this Jackie News as well, he uh, has a huge collection down in in his, uh, as he calls the, uh, the, the the basement bunker uh dungeon he calls it a couple different names uh he has a huge huge uh vinyl collection down there and has been um basically a repository for uh, other collectors when they, unfortunately they have passed and he was he has a lot of great music um and he is very knowledgeable in that music so as people, the three of us here who are big fans of music, the question, I know, Hunter, you have some vinyl, uh, but do you feel vinyl could could make a comeback in DJing? And I remember taking to a few, and I'm going to use air quotes, parties, <laughs> mostly someone's back here or something like that, a couple of milk crates of records, uh, helping friends carrying the stuff in and going through records and having milk crates of records and DJing with them on uh, two turntables and a uh, more or less basic uh, two channel mixer uh, and then listening to the beats and, and filing by BPM, the actual uh, vinyl. Uh, Hunter, if you had a choice to do a DJ gig with vinyl. I'm talking about full vinyl, not the, uh, not using the Toronto, not using virtual DJ. Oh actually looking for records or that would you do it i would definitely i'm a huge lover of vinyl i've been collecting vinyl for over 20 years and yeah i just love the sound of it i love the experience i love the physicality i love the artwork and just i just love going record shopping i would go like whenever i go to my office i would go down to the thrift store and see what kind of records they have and lately they haven't been getting many new records in so I would, a, definitely, I would definitely do it. Do you have a there. do you have a disco around by you or anything like that? A reseller of uh, used uh, compact disc, and a lot of times they have records. They're getting more and more records in disc replay. Well, we have a record shop um, called Kilgore Trouts, and they have a whole, whole ton of vinyl and CDs and cassettes, as well as movies. Oh, and they wow. have everything called Kilgore Trouts in Myrtle Beach. Right, is, okay, so the movies. Here's a quick question: VHS or DVD? Uh, DVD, 4K, Blu-ray, and standard Blu-ray. I like the disc. No, no VHS. Well, I don't have a VCR, so I, I still have a VCR. I still have a working VCR. I keep it working because <laughs> I still have some movies on VHS I like to watch. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have a Panasonic. I have a Panasonic forehead <laughs> Hi-Fi stereo VCR. I got from Circuit City. 
So this is 90s. <laughs> that VCR is probably 25 years old. Still runs and still use it. Yeah, I would definitely do a vinyl set. Okay. Matt. After, after losing all my files, you know, it's just better for me. And well, I think it would just be fun doing it. Matt, mm. if you had a chance to do vinyl, would you do a vinyl set? You know, again, you, it doesn't matter if it's an actual gig or if it's just, you know, hang out with friends. But if mm -hmm. you have a tur two turntables, a basic two channel mixer, and a bunch of vinyl records, would you uh, would you do it? Would you jump on the turntables, the wheels of steel, and get out there and get in front of it and do it? Uh, I wouldn't. I would be clueless. I've never. I don't. I've played a vinyl on a record player before. Uh, I've never. Yeah, I would be. I'd probably be clueless. Oh, I would, yeah. <laughs> It'd be easy to pick up on. Just if, if again, you already know how to DJ. It, it's beat matching again. Do pitch control, doing a pitch control, you know, especially on you know, uh, on the Mark Twos, you know, that pitch control is so butter smooth, and you know, techniques, the techniques yeah, turntable, that that turntable is still, you know, I I I want I want to set really bad, and it's it's you know, it's one of the things that I want to set, but I want to have it out, and I don't have room here to do that. I just don't have room to do it. But once I get room somewhere, I want to move. My goal is to move from this house to another house that I have a, a bigger area to, <laughs> to have the office. I'm not sharing it with the, my treadmill behind me and stuff. <laughs> I, I, can actually, uh, I can actually spread out more, and I would definitely have two turntables and a, a mixer. I, I recently got a record or two records from – Walmart as an Easter gift. I got the Stranger Things uh volume uh the season one soundtrack and of course Metallica Master of Puppets. Yeah. <laughs> you, you got Ride the Lightning? Huh? You have Ride the Lightning? No, the album Ride the Lightning. No, I don't. For Metallica? No. I mostly got the Master of Puppets because of Stranger Things. <laughs> And it, it, you know, again, that, that's again, that's those are great albums to have. And that's listening on record is totally different than the MP3s. I love oh. my music videos. I love that. Yeah, I, I you know I have tons of it. I keep adding all the time through the music video pools. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I add music all the time. But I love music videos. But a record just has this nice warm feeling to it. Definitely. Especially after what happened to me when I lost all my music files and I was like, oh man, what just happened? See, with vinyl, I always have it. As long as it's true. I can keep it. But here's 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 the thing to think about. <laughs> I grab this right here, this little this little hard drive here. This is uh uh this is a two gig hard drive. Um I have Tons of music on here and slow space versus, you know, crates of, of actual uh, vinyl. But I think I would be cool if someone, if I had yeah. the means to do it and had the chance to do a vinyl set, I would do a vinyl set. I think that would be really, really cool. And just See, give the that. Vinyl set, yeah, the vinyl set would have really come in handy for my family's 80s party. Just bring out all my 80s vinyl and just play it like they did. In the wait, 80s. wait, 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 what, what album is that? Is that Lionel uh, Richie? Yeah, Lionel well, Richie. Can't slow down. No, this is just his uh, self-titled album. Oh, okay, so that's early eighties. <laughs> Can't slow down, dance in the ceiling. You know, yeah, those are yeah, yeah. some great albums, and that's uh, that, that's that, that's some great stuff from him. Matt, do you have any records in your house that you've listened to, or do you just listen to everything MP3, wave file? uh my parents have some records at their house um my dad was a big vinyl guy but after vinyl died he got one of those uh he had a service to put them all into mp3 uh so he still has the vinyl recordings but they're on mp3 on his phone or tablet or computer or whatever now but i i don't like i wasn't born in the vinyl era i don't really see the appeal of vinyl like digital is going to be way better sound quality anyway um 
I can't, I don't have a vinyl record player. I'd rather just have it all on digital. I don't know. Maybe that's me. See, vinyl, this is the argument that people have. That, that's why, you know, I, I, the, the, the video is really cool. But what uh, they did for on back uh, backstory. Um, vinyl is a different media, a different sound. It's a much warmer sound than digital. Digital, you have compression with it. And you have sometimes warbling and wobbling in that versus analog print on vinyl. You get little pops, little squeaks here and there on the vinyl because it's it, but it's a warmer feel, warmer sound. It is a definitely different sound, especially I, the best thing to do is get a album, a vinyl album of Inter Sandman, listen to it on Inter Sandman on the record, and then listen to it on an MP3. It's like night and day, and it's a big difference in the sound quality. What sound you prefer out there as a DJ is entirely up to you. I'm not saying one is better format than the other. I'm just saying they're totally different formats. So you yourself as a DJ watching, and again, if you haven't done so already, you're on YouTube, smash the like button, <laughs> follow the channel, as well as put a comment down below. But if you're watching also uh, here on Twitch, don't be afraid to say something down below. Ask a question. The panel here is to, here to answer questions. And if you want something said or you have a question on something, please don't be afraid to, to do so. The um, the other thing also is that with everything uh, that we do, you know, portability on vinyl is very hard. The turntables are not, are not really light. They do make cases for them. Uh, mixer, again, the mixer is a mixer. It's a two-channel basic mixer. Uh, you need to get a four-channel um, DJ mixer. It's it's you know nothing crazy there, but the actual turntables, they're they're pretty big. You got you know worry about needles and worry about the arms. Make sure you you have the arms down secured and so you you can transport them cor uh, correctly. Um, so there's differences. Uh, what is okay? This is from Mr. Maui thirty eight. Well, welcome, Mr. Maui thirty eight. Uh, what is the key to staying relevant as you get older as a DJ? All right. So since I'm probably the oldest one here of the three of us, uh, I think uh, DJ Brentley is uh, slightly older than me uh, by a year or so. Uh, it just myself as a DJ, I would say is making sure you know what is popular. Uh, you may not agree with it. You may not like it, but you at least know what's popular and watch stuff. One of the things I do all the time when, if, when we're in a vehicle, in a vehicle, I have multiple vehicles, uh, I have Sirius XM, listen to Hits 1 on, X, on Sirius XM. Um, listen to what's going on, reading um, what's going on first, what's going on in TikTok. Uh, even though I don't have TikTok, there's a lot of songs popular on TikTok and kind of knowing that uh, what's popular on TikTok. Uh, YouTube, YouTube uh, has a great about music too. I think YouTube is better than TikTok. Hey, what's going on, DJ Adrian? Uh, but make sure you keep up on track of what's popular on music. Now, the one thing that is popular, which I don't do, and actually I have a sign for it, and I, I was going to have it up for DJ Brentley, is that I don't do quick mixes. I'm not, you know, <laughs> certain songs, I can see that, you know, get in and out. He likes quick mixes. I'm not a quick mix DJ. I never have liked that. Um, he does it because the fact that his clientele wants that, and that's fine. They're, they're, we're different DJs. We're all we all look at things differently. We're not the same person, so it's always different. You know, Hunter does things differently than I do. Matt does things differently than than Hunter does. We're all different people, so we look at things differently. There's no right or wrong, but I definitely would say keeping up on on trends, watching technology making things easy upon yourself and also making sure that you um, keep, keep track of uh, and ask questions. And uh, I would say to be open-minded to new music that your client may want. Yes. But like I have a line, my line is no foul language. So yeah. again, I, yeah. I'm not a big hip hop or rap uh the newer stuff. I'm not a big fan for it. 
I will get it and play it. That's radio edit stuff. And I, you know, I, I don't mind some Drake. I don't mind some of the, uh, you know, some Lizzo and stuff like that, more popular ones, but also you, um, you have to look at what, you know, the client wants. And again, you have to work with them and you also have to know what works on a dance floor too. Uh, Oh, I also love quick mixing. Again, that's entirely up to you. If you like quick mixing, that's what you feel is best. You know, uh, there's a certain DJ from New Jersey who's over YouTube who thinks it's the only way to do it. Do I think that? No. Again, the difference is an opinion and it doesn't matter. I, I do what I do. He does what he does. That's great. And, um, you know, again, he does a great job at it. I feel I do a great job at mine. We both have great reviews. That's the important stuff. We make our customers happy. And again, if, if Matt does that or if Hunter did that or Brent, and I know DJ Brentley does it and we want to do that, that's entirely up to you. It's how you want to run your business. So I always say, and that's one thing you won't hear here, you need to do this. No, I would say you need something in your like equipment bag. Like I, I put it on YouTube. I have the video on there for the, uh, cable tester. I feel that's a need. That's something you should have a cable tester of some kind to check cables because cables are not cheap. Plus also you don't want to have bad sound or problems, but it's one of the things that, that I think it's a need, but not, you don't not forced to. It doesn't apply to every event though. Again, you, you're, you're, it's your decision. You uh, know the customer, you don't need to be done and you have to take care of it. So, uh, Hunter, since you're the youngest guy here, uh, you're younger than Matt by a couple of years, and Matt ran off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think now that you're 30? Or oh, what? You're, going, you're close sense. to 30. Well, I know you, you're close enough. You're closer <laughs> to 30 than 29. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, what do you think to keep yourself relevant? What do you think some tricks are? Well, I like to use several sources. I use SiriusXM obviously, because I have a, we have a Ford Fusion that has Sirius XM, but it's mostly older stuff, like 80s on 8, 90s on 9, 70s on 7, 50s gold, 60s gold, Elvis radio, the older stuff, but I don't really listen to the newer stuff, unless I'm in the car with my sister, then she listens to Sirius XM hits one. And I also use TikTok to see what's popular and trending on TikTok, because I know the younger people love that. And some of the um, older stuff has been trending on TikTok as well, like um, the love of older music from like the 90s and 2000s. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Just like you see in commercials, you'll see a, a commercial come on, especially in their Super Bowl, they'll pick songs, an 80, you know, 80 song, 90 song, 2000 mm -hmm. songs been around for a while. And then obviously there's resurgence yeah. of it. So it, the other thing is, you know, keeping track of what we see on commercials, uh, movies, popular movies. You know, if you look at Guardians of the Galaxy, they made all that 70s, uh, early 80s stuff popular again. And I still have, to this day, weddings that people have, they want Guardians of the Galaxy feeling of music. They want those songs, you know, and it, it's it's like, okay, I know exactly what it is because I've done enough of them. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it's what's popular. So... You never know you run into with a themed uh, event and what people will request. And yeah, a lot of times, kids, even, yeah. kids amaze yeah. me sometimes. They'll ask for stuff that, you know, it's like, wow, I haven't played this in a lot of time. They must be listening to what their parents uh, listen to. Matt, your turn. I know you're a, a year or two older than Hunter here, uh, not by much. Um, what do you think that? Uh, us older DJs can do to keep relevant in 2023, 20, 24, 25, and so forth. And you're also muted too. <laughs> <laughs> He's good talking. No oh. Um, yeah, I mean, I try to always have new music. Um, I Tuesday and Wednesday are kind of like my music downloading day. So like Tuesday, I prep for my weddings and events for the week. I download music. I put it in playlists. I organize it. it organize it all um i do a lot like hunter i listen to a lot of xm mostly bpm and diplo uh as well as the tiktok channel pandora uh hits one all that and then i listen to a few different podcasts like from tiesto morgan page uh, rehab and um 
there's a lot of like late night radio shows on the XM stations. I get a lot of music from that. So like hits one, uh, I think it's called hit bound with Mikey Piff. Uh, whenever that one comes on, they always have really cool, like new tracks. Um, so I do that. I, I do, I dive deep in Spotify too. Uh, I use Spotify's algorithm a lot to find. That's a a good way to stay relevant is seeing what's on streaming. Yeah. I'll, I'll like, I'll find a song I like, and then I'll find, you know, the radio, uh, like on Spotify's radio version of it, and then it'll suggest all the similar songs. So, yeah, that's how I do it. I don't know. I try to stay young and hip and fresh, and I'm only 32, but people say I look like I'm 20 something, so I'll take it. Oh yeah, you look you look young. So here's one of the things to think about. One of the guys who I listen to on uh, Sirius XM, especially on the weekends, is uh, Spider Harrison. Uh, he's, yeah, he does countdowns and stuff like that for everything's popular. And I want to say he's from New York, and I want to say he's in his sixties. Wow. Uh, yeah, I listen to those countdowns as well. But on Friday nights, I'm on A's on eight. Listen to the Big Forty countdown with Mark Goodman, Alan Hunter, and Nina Blackwood. And oh man, Nina Blackwood, her voice. Oh man. I can't stand oh, yeah. her voice. She has a she has a great uh great, great time. And uh, I don't think that's right, Spider Harrison. Uh I'll do XM. Yeah, there's him. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. He's been DJing since like the late seventies, so he's been on the radio for a long time, according to Wikipedia. Which, again, you gotta take what Wikipedia says with a, you know, a grain of salt, and say, hey, um, but. No, no, I didn't say fifty. I didn't see fifty-one for Spire Harrison. Uh, I thought he was in his. Say DJ in the sixties here. If I looked right, but again, he's he's been around for a long time. And Spire Harrison, again, he's one of the guys that you listen to on Sirius XM. So if he's, he's got that deep one, he's got that unique voice. That much. Yeah. Um. But it's 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 one of the things that you know you have him doing stuff. The other, the one of the things guilty pleasure I like listening to, uh, once in a while is actually uh, DJ Bueller, and he does a safety dance, Saturday night safety dance, and takes uh, new wave stuff, and uh, mixes it. So it's always interesting his mixes. I like listening to that how you blend stuff. So it is interesting. Um, but you know again staying relative again that that's, that's two takes takes. As well as my take, so that's three. And then if uh, Brentley comes in here, I'll get his take on everything. I'm just kind of sad that he's not here yet. He uh, like before he messaged me uh, at uh, eight oh nine saying our train is behind. So he, I know he's taking the last train to Clarksville or what he's doing, or he's taking the uh, um, uh, tra- you know last train out or what he's doing, but uh, <laughs> he's uh Unfortunately, not here. So we miss him. If you're not here this week, it's no big deal. You'll be on next week. You know, we all have real lives. We all have stuff to do. <laughs> so it, it's uh, all these guys know that, that they got stuff going on. Not to worry. Um, yeah, it's, and, you know, it's going to be awesome this summer to do the show from my office, you know, just a change of scenery. Well, yeah. And, and you can share stuff with us and like uh, show us, uh, how, you know, some of the, Maybe some of the stuff around the office or something gives a tour. Give me the five yeah. cent tour. I'll give you five, a nickel and you give me the five cent tour. Yeah. Or maybe you uh do uh do it from uh Sam's corner one night if uh I don't know how late Sam's corner is open on Tuesdays. Uh, I'm I'm yeah, I'm only gonna be there on the weekends on Saturdays. Okay. Eight, so oh, maybe, that's maybe you was- hang out there for a little while, eat a hot dog and talk and have a coke and a hot dog and Sit back, relax, and enjoy on Tuesday night. Whatever you want, dude. You know, we're all down for it. <laughs> so I yeah. wanted to wait for the yes, no question of the night, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with the yes, no question of the night. 
And then again, this is a question that there's no right or wrong. This is how each person, you know, thinks. So there's no difference between uh, what they uh, what what they would do. And uh, it doesn't matter. Some person gives a different opinion than another. It's a yes, no question. There's no right or wrong. Uh, it's not a gotcha question either. That's the last thing I want to do is give people gotcha questions. Um, so the yes, no question of the night. Would you? Here's a question. Would you take an event, a gig, in another country if, if they paid for your room and board, your food, a rental car, and also paid you, you know, a salary to live there, paid for your flight there, paid for your flight back, and you're there, but the, the, st the stipulation is you're there for five to six months DJing at a either a club or a restaurant. Would you take that and leave everything behind right now in your business and go do that? A once in a lifetime thing. Does, you only get one chance. Now I'm, I'm a rich prince from whatever land. <laughs> when I come to you and say, I will pay for you for six months in my hotel, my restaurant, my club, whatever. I will pay for rental car. I will pay you, you know, lots of money. I will make sure you have lots of food. Uh, I make sure you have lots of, you know, exercise equipment and whatever else you need. I want you to DJ my fill in the blank overseas somewhere. And, you know, it's not a bad country. It's a great country. You know, it's not like, you know, there's nothing, no, nothing crazy is going on. And I already got, I got two no's down there. They would not do that. So Hunter, I would. would you do that? Would you go to another country and be a resident DJ for six months or so? Yes. Yes, definitely. I would mostly go to Kid Willie Wales. That's where my great grandmother was from. She's from Kid Willie Wales. I would, you know, DJ for my family who I've never met before because I still have family in Wales. I would absolutely DJ for them. Okay. Say, hey, I'm your relative from America, and I'm here to DJ for you. Well, what happens? It was, let's say, it was like Greece, or it was Italy, or if it was something else. But the stipulation is, if you want to go visit, you know, on during the weekdays, you're just working weekends, so Saturday, Sunday, you go DJ at Club Buddy, <laughs> and then during the week, I'll give you a plane ticket to fly. If you want to go fly to. Uh, uh, to England, go to go visit Welsh. Would you do that? Uh, Adrian E. For myself, answers no. I have too much responsibility here. Okay. Yeah, I, I would probably have to say no too because I have too much going on here too. But and I, my wife, I wouldn't want to leave my wife behind. I don't think Adrian would leave his wife behind. <laughs> but it's just for you, no one else. So it's only you. But again, you have car service. You have all. You get paid a lot of money. We're we're talking not like you know. Twenty thousand or thirty thousand. We're talking probably maybe a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars paid on top of everything else. Would you then, do? Yeah. It? yeah, yes. My answer would be a solid yes. Okay. Well, okay, Matt. I think I heard an answer from you earlier, but I wasn't sure. Mm hmm. Oh no. I mean, I I have too many commitments, and uh, now if we're talking like. If you want to plan me out for there for next year and maybe like a couple weeks out of a month in the summer or maybe even like two months in the summer and you're paying me at least, if not more than what I make, if I was to do high end weddings every weekend, multiple times a weekend. Sure. Otherwise, no, I'm good. OK. All right. And I, again, we got in the, in the chat down here. Everyone's like, no, no, no. Not, uh, for myself, the answer is no. I have too many, too much responsibility. Again, I couldn't just because, again, I, between my wife and our granddaughter and our business, I couldn't do that. I couldn't just get up and do that. It would be an interesting thing, be an interesting, you know, what if scenario. But that is the uh, yes, no question for tonight. Would you? And the only one who said yes is Hunter. So he would, uh, he would go. DJ yeah, because I'm, I'm always yeah, I've always wanted to explore other countries and take a break from America for a little bit. Well, especially you know, I, I just saw. Um, I know Dubai does that. Dubai uh, hires in big name DJs to come in there 
and DJ, you know, a club or a festival for, for a while. They have residency there, but they get yeah, yeah. everything. They get like a driver to drive them around. They get, you know, they, they get, because Dubai has so much money. You know, I I, I want to say, what did I see? I saw it somewhere. I, I want to say, was it Dubai or UAE? One of the countries for a special license plate in that country sold for like $55 million. It was, a, it was, it was a special license plate and the license plate bid was up to $55 million or one for that. So yeah. 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 Speaking of Dubai, make sure you check out DJ Michelle. She's one of the youngest DJs in the world. She lives in Dubai. She's a kid and she really knows how to scratch on turntables. There you go. And doing on turntables. That's again, that's the other trick too. You know, that that's always fun. And then, uh, for the last part of the show, because we're we're a little early, because usually uh, that's about the four of us or five of us. Usually we go we we have more people talking, uh, so we're a little early tonight. But for the next question, which is going we're going to kind of end the night with here, so it gives a kind of discussion here. Um, with everything going on, and when with everything going on with your gigs and stuff like that, you know, Hunter, you have you know Sam's Corner. And you have a couple other gigs lined up for the year in the year to do. And I know Matt's got tons of gigs. I have, you know, He's tons of team. weddings to do. With everything that you're you get for this year that you have this year, have you seen, and you guys out there can answer the same stuff too. Have you guys seen a for bookings for next year? Have you guys seen a it stay the same? It's busier, it's slower. Or have you seen people um, just inquiring and not doing anything about it? What are you guys seeing out there for 2024? A lot of ghosting. Uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, I've, I've got, I think, like seven for next year. Um, but they're all like $5,000 packages. So they're all like going all out, which is nice. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it doesn't seem... It, it's uh, it's slowed down. I think people are you know getting into the swing of things. I think summer we'll see next year's bookings start to ramp up, but um, it's kind of all over. At least in Orange County, a lot of people are talking about very limited inquiries and bookings are kind of slowed up. Um, so I don't know. That's that's kind of what we're seeing. But yeah. Hunter, what about you? What are you seeing? Well, for twenty twenty four, I don't really have any bookings that i know of any uh friends or family or something you know inquiry not right now not really i mean i just take one day at a time i see what happens oh, yeah. i'm it's all I'm we kind of like the last, <laughs> yeah i'm kind of yeah i'm kind of like the last minute dj so adrian he, says a lot of tire kickers and i think mm -hmm. adrian with that right there it, that that that's always to me it's always been the norm talking to people mm -hmm. you know either through the night or through whatever service and you know throwing your it's like it's like fishing you keep casting you know, your line and see who what bites and who takes that bite um i think that you know 2024 is going to be not as crazy as this year or as crazy as last year was and the reason why i think a lot of that pent of demand because of 2020 2021 was in 2022 and 2023 and 2024 i think is going to be more of a normal year it's not going to be as crazy so i think we're going to find our back to our normal if you do 50 gigs a year you'll get 50 gigs if you do 10 gigs a year you'll get 10 gigs you'll get your normal versus uh, usually a higher percentage of how it has been like in 2021 2022 and this so. year's been pretty busy too yeah i hope so because or we might be seeing the end of cool thing or team if i'm not getting any gigs i could go out of business due to lack of business and we don't want that to happen so hopefully we don't we don't want that to happen and that's that's anybody and it can happen to anyone we want i want nothing to happen to anyone you guys out there watching and stuff like that i don't want to see anyone lose their business uh unfortunately we've had we've seen people friends family uh lose businesses before uh especially during 2020 during covid um a lot of things you know there's there's people who i know not friends or family but uh, people who I've known through the industry that, you know, 
lost your business and doesn't matter DJ or restaurant or, you know, selling widgets on a street corner. I've seen a few people lose their business because of the fact that between everything going on in 2020 and, and everything that happened, uh, they lost your business. So it's one of the things that, you know, I, again, I think that with, 2024, I think we're going to start getting back down to the normal level so. of gigs. So I think 2023 is going to be another big year. Like uh, 2022 for us was huge. For me, 2020 is going to be another big year. And 2024 is going to be more of a normal. I think I think my busiest year was 2021, but 2022, no gigs. Well, I've had some not big gigs. This year is a decent year, but hopefully 2024 is a much even better. Year. Well, you got you got Sam's Corner, which you know you didn't have before, and that's how many how many uh, Saturdays you have at Sam's Corner. Hmm? How many Saturdays you have signed up for Sam's Cor Sam's Corner? Well, for Sam's Corner during the summer, it's going to be one Saturday out of the month, one Saturday in June, one Saturday in July, and the other in August. Okay, so like for three four months, you get three or four gigs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's not that's not bad. Uh, well, it all happened because of the uh, grand reopening. They, they loved it so much that they wanted me back. <laughs> and that's the thing is that you know that that gig log. If you haven't been to their channels on YouTube and seen their gig logs, make sure you go check their gig logs out. He does have a gig log up for Sam's Corner. Uh, the, as again, we call it Chicago hot dog stands uh, down there in uh, South Carolina and. It's a beautiful little restaurant. Uh, they do hot dogs, uh, hamburgers, uh, soft grilled chicken sandwiches. Yeah, we do. We even do healthy options like grilled chicken sandwiches, grilled chicken salads, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but you go to a hot dog. It, it, it's like uh, one of the restaurants I love going to right by me, which this is the plug for him, Sporty's Catering and Beef in Bloomingdale, Illinois. Um that is one of the places I love going to for a hot dog out here. My favorite place is actually Super Dog Hot Dogs in the city and up in um, in Wheeling, Illinois. Uh, that's my favorite place to go because I grew up right by this, this Super Dog in the city. Um, but the one out uh, my friend out here, um, Rocco, who owns uh, him and his wife own uh, Sporties here in Bloomingdale. They have they have they have healthy stuff. They have salads and stuff like that. Because again, he wants to make you know. So everyone has something. So if you get a party, people going there. If if I took Hunter there, Hunter's like, I don't want a hot dog. I want to have chicken tenders, or I want to have they did that great chicken tenders. They had the world's best chicken tenders. Uh, I I want a salad. I I can get that for him. If I took Matt there, uh, being from California, he went avocados and fish and you know <laughs> tofu. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know they they have diversified uh you know um, menu. Which is nice because you can get a hot dog or you can get, as Chicagoans have, Italian beefs. Which, if you know what Italian beef is, you guys can Google yeah. it. You guys so have Italian beef before. Get the Gardenera on there. Well, you call it? You go, there's Portillo's out in California, out in the LA area. Portillo's? Portillo's, there's two of them. But you get the, what is it's called, what? Gardenera or Jardinera? Gardenera. It's a, it's a, you don't have, you don't have so to get good. it on there. I, I get, I'm not a fan for it, but uh, it, I love it. everybody likes it differently. Some people like cheesy beefs. They like sweet and hot, sweet peppers and hot peppers. So you can get it where you want to, just like you can do what you want to do for your DJ business. So if Hunter, and I will, I, I'm going to say this right now, if Hunter wants to buy a subwoofer, we were talking about this earlier, and he decides on something, that's what he decides on. If you guys want to say, hey, I, I, I have this and I have that, you can give your opinion. And that's the thing is that we, we were just sharing what we want to do. Obviously, it's up to you if you want to do it or not. And Hunter's going to buy what I tell him to buy, right, Hunter? <laughs> no. Uh, Hunter's going to make his own decision, just like Matt's going to make his decision, like I make a decision. That's why you guys make a decision, and we want to make sure you're informed when you make your decisions and you think about things, and you make your customers happy. And again, we're all small business people. We're not millionaires here. Well, maybe Matt is, but we're not millionaires. Uh, uh, but the thing is that we work hard every day. And, you know, again, Matt works hard. Hunter works hard. I work hard. Brentley works hard. You know, uh, uh, Byron works hard. You can, I go down the list. Everyone has been on the show and everyone who comes in here regularly. 
we all work hard for every single thing we do, every gig, we work hard on it to make sure we get as close to perfection as possible. We try to have fun with our jobs. We try to have fun with what we do. At the end of the day, do what's best for your business. Do what's best for you. Do what's best for uh, for your client. Take care of your customer. Make your customers happy. And again, happy customers, trust me, reviews and stuff like that are very important. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about next next week is the review area. So that's a question for you guys for next week. If you want to tune in for that, reviews. Where do you think you should get reviews? How do you think you should get reviews? And one other thing also, I'm going to leave you guys on a, uh, something that I was talking to Matt earlier. And again, this is something I do. And you guys want to do it as well. This is not a bad thing. A lot of people use phones for communication via text, via whatever. I also have a Google voice number. My office number is my Google voice number. My Google voice number is rings on my, yes, I have a house phone, rings on my house phone. So it rings on here. So I get rung on my, my house phone. Um, it rings on my cell phone. It rings on the computer. If my tablet's open, it'll ring on my tablet, and I can answer the phone from any one of those positions. I It also gives a caller ID, and it's great. But also that, customers can text that number, and you get that message on your phone, your computer, your tablet, and you can actually read that message and message back and forth. So it's not just one place. You can see it in multiple locations if you need to. So... I would definitely recommend if you have a number or you want a number, look at Google Voice. Uh, it's free. It's not an exp it's not a cost. A lot of you follow certain parameters, which means you can't call long distance. You can't call you know other countries. You can't do stuff like that. You need to have a Google account, which I think everyone has a you know a Gmail account. Uh, and you look into it, see if it fits your you know your area. It fits what your needs are. I enjoy it. I like it. It's a number I always tell customers, you know, they want contact to text the number. It's on our Google information. It is on my business cards as our office number. And our last four digits are DJ4U. So it's one of the things that you can play around to get the last four digits, something that may mean something to you. Uh, you know, you can probably get maybe uh, last four digits, you know, DJ uh, AE you know, for the last four or something like that, you know, for a DJ Adrian E. Uh, never know. And if you have a Google Voice number, uh, you know, next uh, next uh, show, tell me what you think of it. Tell me how you use it. Tell me uh, what you do with it and how it doesn't work for you. If, you. if you haven't thought of it, take a look at it. You know, again, I like to give, I can't say tips, but I try to give stuff that may help you out, may save some headaches and, Things I've done it. I see it works for me. Does it mean it's going to work for you? That's that's for you to decide. Other than that, it's been it's been an hour already, and we've been through a lot here, the three of us. And I <laughs> finished my taxes. Yeah, it's weird without Brelly here. It's it, it weird without some of our friends here, and we I feel alone with. I, and thank God I got you guys. <laughs> But I've done I've done the show for uh, by ourselves. And uh, looking back at the time machine, July twenty first, I want to say, is the first time we had DJ Roundtable on YouTube and on Twitch. So this July, the episode that's going to be closest to that's going to be our, our one year anniversary on Twitch and YouTube, and we'll have a year in review then with some stuff. And I'm going to try and see if we can get some old people who have, haven't been on the show for a while on for that. That's going to be something that you'll have to at least stop by, say hi, either in a chat or, or whatever. But I'm going to try. I can't guarantee anything, but I'd like to see some people come in here, stop by, say hi after one year of being here on YouTube and on Twitch, uh, switching over from um, the fun stuff on Instagram. And I'm glad that we did move because now more people get to see it. We have tons of more people get to watch it. And people get to enjoy it as well. So, again, guys, I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. All you guys in the chat tonight, thank you so much for chatting, talking, asking questions. 
giving your opinion and giving your answers is greatly appreciated. You guys have a good night. Have fun. And as always, Hunter, say a good night to everyone. See you guys later. Peace out.